Hello, my name is Scott Davis, and I specialize in the engineering analysis and testing of combustion, thermal, and fluid processes. Today, we're going to talk about ammonium nitrate and some of the devastating hazards associated with this material. Recently, it's actually been made quite famous with some of the more devastating incidents that have occurred in the past decade. For example, on October 4th, 2020, just last year, the city of Beirut was stricken with one of the most devastating explosions ever caught on video, a detonation of a large deposit of ammonium nitrate in the port, which caused immense damage to the city and a huge crater right at the port itself. Sadly, this was not an isolated incident. Five years earlier, on August 2015, a similar incident took place in Tijan, China, where tragically 173 people lost their lives and hundreds more were injured. The explosion had an impact on more than 5,000 families that were living within a couple miles from the epicenter. And even before that, in April of 2013, in West Texas, the United States, was the place of another tragic incident that occurred. And in this particular case, unfortunately, 15 people lost their lives during this event. Most of them were predominantly first responders or the firemen that were actually working there during the moments just prior to the explosion. And due to the disastrous consequences that these incidents produce, there are several countries now that are now banning the product as it can also be used in an explosive additive. But the question is, what is ammonium nitrate and how can we actually safely handle it? Ammonium nitrate can be found naturally as a mineral, and it's also produced by reacting anhydrous ammonia with nitric acid. And this is actually dried to form small beads or prills. This white crystalline compound is used extensively as a fertilizer. It's also produced in massive quantities. For example, in 2017, over 20 million tons were produced. And as the agricultural demand grows in the world, we can expect that the demand for this highly effective fertilizer is sure to follow. Its large production demand also makes it challenging to handle, as it may need to be both transported and stored in mass quantities. This is where things can get a bit tricky and where careful attention needs to be placed in order to prevent future disasters. Have you ever heard of the expression, let sleeping dogs lie? Meaning that if you have this calm situation, you don't want to perturb it and potentially have something worse happen. Well, for example, ammonia, if we compare that to ammonium nitrate, it is well beyond that because it's so stable, meaning I wouldn't consider it or classify it as a sleeping dog, but more like a sedated lion, meaning this sedated lion you can hit, you can kick, and basically nothing will happen. It won't wake up. There will be no consequences. But if this unique set of circumstances are present, this lion will wake up and you can actually have this massive detonation. Well, ammonium nitrate is actually non-combustible. It doesn't burn. It can't burn. It's actually just a strong oxidizer, meaning it will help in the combustion process, but it cannot burn itself. And also ammonium nitrate is extremely stable under most conditions. However, when exposed to extreme heat, for example, like the massive fires that occurred in each of the three most recent incidents from Beirut, Tijan, or West Texas, it can start a series of events that can end in tragedy. When ammonium nitrate is heated beyond its melting point of approximately 170 degrees Celsius, molten AN, when it actually becomes molten, is actually sensitive to explosive decomposition and basically can explode if it is exposed to shocks, for example, like projectiles in a fire or incident like that. However, molten AN typically just spreads and it will just enhance burning, but it won't actually explosively decompose in many circumstances. However, if this molten ammonium nitrate is combined, for example, in drains, pits, sumps, sewers, machinery, it can explode. And furthermore, if the molten AN is contaminated with, for example, certain organics that happen either prior to or during the fire or incompatible organics, then it can actually help enhance the explosion and the explosion propensity of ammonium nitrate. So therefore, if we have this unique set of circumstances, how can we go about and mitigate the essential sedated lion? We don't want that event. So how can we actually prevent this and actually safely store even large quantities of ammonium nitrate? Well, one of the first and foremost things is we need these massive fires. So do everything you can to avoid that. First thing, all construction be of non-combustible, basically within things that cannot burn and also stored in things that cannot burn 
or stored near things that cannot burn. Other things, for example, on the fire protection side is having automated sprinkler or suppression system, meaning that if there is a fire or if a fire is detected, you can actually put it out and they recommend using water. So water would be a common thing in these sprinkler systems, basically, and it's retroactively applied. You can't get away, say it's grandfathered in, but all installations need to have these sprinkler systems put into place. So if there is a detection of a fire, it can automatically put it out. So the floors, you basically want to avoid places of confinement. A lot of the new construction now is requiring that the floors be sloped and slanted. So molten ammonium nitrate cannot basically accumulate in drains, traps, tunnels, or pits. It can just kind of flow away in open areas. And lastly, in order to also safely store ammonium nitrate, it should be isolated in separate rooms, especially from organic chemicals, acids, or other corrosive materials, compressed or flammable gases, pyrophoric materials, combustible materials, flammable and combustible liquids, and other contaminating substances. So therefore, while ammonium nitrate under most conditions is so stable, and I think people get this false sense of security that nothing will happen because we have the sedated lying, that unique set of circumstances has happened and it continues to happen in time. Therefore, we need to put these mandatory mitigating measures in place in order to avoid future incidents.